Hey there, Nicole Frost of Frost Yarns. So this technique is really just like a hybrid between kettle dyeing and speckling and able to do it in all one pot. So as you can see here, this is 4.5 grams of dye and the, uh, about a tablespoon of citric acid per pan. And I'm gonna fill this up with an inch of water and I'm going to put the skeins in. And what I wanna do is dye the back side of the skein one color and then leave the top white so I can speckle over it and it'll give you this effect. Now that we have everything out, we take one of our pre-wetted skeins and strip off the excess water. This is 300 grams. I cut these myself. Normally you would do three 100 gram skeins, or in this case, one 300 gram skein. And then we carefully lay it in and pull it back. And we wanna keep this white space on the top because this is where we're gonna speckle. There we go. And as you can see, it's just enough water that it absorbs through the back of the skein, but leaves me a nice white space. There we go. Now we're going to do part two and I'm going to get the dye ready. So the colors we're going to use are hot pink from ProCam, Lily Rose from Aljo, fluorescent safety orange from Dharma, um, fluorescent lemon from Dharma, Spearmint Breeze, Radioactive, Bright Aqua, and Purple Pop. These colors just go really well and for that Lisa Frank vibe. Now remember, each dye has its own density and its own mill type, so some of them are more like cornstarch, and therefore they're not going to speckle as well as the ones that are gritty and sandy. don't know if you can see, but that speckles better than, say this because it's so powdery it drops in a clump and not a clean little dye puff. So normally you would wear a respirator but you won't be able to hear me if I do that and all I'm gonna do is start at the top and we're gonna go pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. That means when the person goes back to knit it they get rainbow pops of color in order. I could do rainbow over the whole thing but I really increase my chances of getting a lot of unintentional brown out, and we want this to be super vibrant, all neons, very Lisa Frank, as little brown as we possibly can. So I just take a pinch like this, and from about this height, and I put one third the amount of speckles I ultimately want because they will grow. And then I just do a dry wipe and go into my next color and do all of them. So I'm gonna come back when I have these on and show you how I like to fix the speckles in place. So I mix about a teaspoon of citric acid in boiling hot water, and I like to fix my speckles in place with this. If I don't do this step, when I go to rinse, there could still be just dye powder on top of the yarn, and it will backstain the skeins, and it will also, um, just bleed and anyway, usually a lot of dyers have a much higher water table than this and so the speckle melts into the background but then you don't really have a speckle, it's more of a blotch. So this is how I like to do it and I just fix them in place like this. And now I'm gonna throw them into the proofer, which this one is from Avant Co. It's a full size insulated proofer for about two hours. It takes an hour to come up to heat and then an hour in the heat. I've found that uh, the more I fill the proofer, the slower it gets up to temperature because it's full. So I like to run it half full so that these get really hot. It, the, it doesn't go above 206, although it's graded to 175. And so these skeins are never boiling. I do like to keep super low water tables because I find that I get cleaner, crisper speckles this way. If you're trying to do this on a stove top, then you would do the background color and then you would speckle it and put it in a steamer wrapped in plastic wrap if you don't have one of these or you don't have an oven to use. You can't put such a low water table on a steam tray or like a, an induction burner like this because it'll sizzle the yarn. Hope that helps.